So I've said it before that Osmo Pocket is the best pocketable video camera around. It's a perfect combination of features and portability. But Apple is known for having great cameras and great video quality on its phones and their newly released iPhone SE is no different. So do you need a standalone video shooter or can you invest $30 more in a phone and still get that same video quality? Let's find out. <laughs> to start off with, let's talk about the cameras on these two devices. The Osmo Pocket has a 12 megapixel 1 over 2.3 inch sensor um, that shoots f2 and the iPhone has a slightly smaller 1 over 3 inch sensor which is 12 megapixel and shoots at 1.8. A pretty even match considering the size of the sensor compared to the aperture differences. So let's look at photo first and we're looking straight out of camera JPEGs with no settings changed on either device. Straight away we can see the iPhone definitely adds some saturation to the image whereas the Osmo Pocket keeps a more natural image. Here the iPhone's image is more pleasing and actually slightly sharper too, but you could obviously add some saturation to the pocket picture in post. It's in this image that we can start to see a real difference, with the iPhone exposing well for both the shadows of the building and also the sky, whereas the Osmo Pocket really struggles with the sun because it just lacks dynamic range. This most likely comes down to the processing that phones do with images before we see them. The iPhone likely darkens the sky and lightens the building before we see the image because phones have evolved to use clever software to make good use of small sensors. The Osmo Pocket, however, as you can also see in the video test, doesn't process the image as much and therefore struggles in these situations. Again, in this image, the iPhone gets the exposure spot on and makes those colors pop in the sky. And again, the dynamic range is better. The Osmo Pocket photo is less saturated and darker and yes, we could shoot in RAW, but for now, these are straight out of camera. In this video, there's not much of a difference between the two. The Osmo Pocket comes into its own when shooting video, and that's its main purpose. And here you can see it exposes and focuses as well as the iPhone. Again though, it does struggle a bit more in situations with high contrast, where the iPhone handles it better, but not perfect. So obviously the Osmo Pocket has one big advantage, and that is that it's on a gimbal. So with the camera being on a gimbal, you can do more advanced movements and walking with minimal shake whereas the iPhone does use digital image stabilization. So let's see which one works better. I was shocked at how the digital stabilization on the iPhone kept up with the Osmo Pocket in this shot. However, in this shot, there are some artifacts from the stabilization of the iPhone, whereas the Osmo Pocket doesn't have these because it's being stabilized by that gimbal. The electronic stabilization may also explain why the iPhone shots are a bit more zoomed in. That extra bit of focal length is taken away in favor of room to stabilize. And so the Osmo Pocket is much wider for video and slightly wider for photo. This is a huge thing for me and I'll explain why later on. The Osmo Pocket had a bad reputation for autofocus when it first came out because of that dodgy contrast based autofocus. It would often pulsate and just miss focus completely. But somehow they put the face detection autofocus into the camera and now it's actually really good and all is forgiven. The iPhone however has always been pretty good at autofocus and this is no different. You can see that the changes in exposure are really obvious here but you can lock that exposure I believe if you're inclined to. Both devices perform great in the autofocus test. Before we get into additional features, let me know your thoughts so far in the comments down below. Obviously, if you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe for more content like this. The Osmo Pocket also has a ton of additional features that make use of that gimbal. For example, the motion lapse mode um, and some of the panorama modes where it takes the photos automatically and you don't need to move it around at all. The iPhone, of course, can do the panorama modes and has a whole range of apps to use the camera for different reasons, which of course Osmo Pocket can't do because it is just a camera. Now obviously the SE is a phone, and so for the extra $30 on top of the Osmo Pocket, you can get a device that you can watch videos, browse the web, check your emails, go on social media, and so it really is a multi-purpose tool. But that isn't necessarily a good thing. Put yourself in a situation where you're on a long hike or exploring a new place, and you really want to take some photos and videos, but on the way home you need to make some calls um, and entertain yourself on the train back. And this is where having a standalone device could be much better because if you're just filming and taking photos on your phone, you can be worried about that battery life, especially on your iPhone SE where the battery is not great. And so a standalone camera like the Osmo Pocket is great because you can take as much photo and video as you like and still have enough battery on your phone um, to go home, make calls, etc. It's definitely a weird comparison, but I thought it was necessary to show some of the extra things that iPhone could do, but some of the reasons you might want a standalone camera. It's difficult to draw a conclusion from this, considering both devices are so different, but let's see what they're both good and bad at. For photos, the iPhone is hands down better. If you've got the latest iPhone 11, SE, or really any flagship in 2020 for that matter, 
um, then just invest in a power bank and use your phone to take the photos. It's gonna do better than the Osmo Pocket and it will save you carrying around extra gear. If you're keen on video though, it does change a little bit. The Osmo Pocket just creates effortlessly cinematic videos and I know cinematic is used quite a lot, but what I'm referring to is smooth shots like slider shots and walking shots and without having to worry too much about the stabilization or it being shaky. And also the contrast is great. The D-Cine light could be good for color grading. So in my opinion, apart from dynamic range, the Osmo Pocket does really well in video. Coming back to that focal length then, and I'd always prefer the wider look on the Osmo Pocket. Again, I think the iPhone uh, does crop in a little bit to get that digital image stabilization in. Um, but I think if you're gonna carry one lens, it's always gonna be slightly wider because then it's more versatile. You can also get an abundance of accessories from the Osmo Pocket and customize it in any way you want. So even though the iPhone has the best 4K video of any phone out there, I still think the Osmo Pocket holds the crown. It's a great addition to anyone's pocket as a standalone video device, whether that be for traveling or home videos. So that's it from me. Let me know what you think of the cameras down below in the comments and I'll be sure to reply to as many as you can. Which one do you think wins? Which one do you think you'd prefer to buy? And do you agree that a standalone camera is often better so you're not draining the battery on your phone? That said, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification button to be notified, and I'll see you in the next one.